some news coming in from Karnataka where ahead of polls the Karnataka government is forming a panel to submit a report on declaring Tulu as the second official language of the state. In the run up to the assembly elections in Karnataka the BJP is moving to appease linguistic groups in coastal Karnataka. The Minister for Kannada and Culture Energy V Sunil Kumar has gone on to say that the government has already constituted a committee to study and submit a report on declaring Tulu as the second official language of the state the tuluvas are a large ethno linguistic group in coastal karnataka tulu language activists remember have been demanding its inclusion in the eighth schedule of the constitution the committee will be headed by m mohan alva chairman alva's education foundation the committee is informed to submit the report within a time period of 7 days well that's the update that's coming in from karnataka all of this happening before we see polls in the state where we are now understanding the government has in fact formed a panel to submit a report the panel has been given a time period of 7 days as i pointed out and all of this on declaring tulu as the second official language of the state now why does this become important because remember as i have been pointing out the tulu language activists in fact have been demanding its inclusion in the eighth schedule of the constitution remember the bjp is now moving to appease linguistic groups in coastal karnataka Remember Tulvas are a large ethno-linguistic group in coastal Karnataka and their demand has been uh, a long standing one where they've been asking for the inclusion of Tulu language in the 8th schedule of the constitution as i pointed out this formation of the committee has already happened and a time period of one week has been given let me also now bring in my colleague Harish Upadhyay who in fact has been tracking these developments for us Harish of course all of this is happening with a close eye on elections talk to us about why this is important for the bjp and who all are part of this panel or committee well uh, mr alva who hails from this uh, region who runs the education institution uh, he will be heading this committee and this committee has been asked to submit a report uh, within a week's time uh, a very short span of time and to do the kind of uh, research and the kind of uh, support that is to go in in terms of backing this move but largely seen as another effort by the bjp to ensure that uh, in excess of uh, 10 to 15 lakh tulu speaking population that's present largely in coastal part of karnataka uh, spread over three districts of uh, uh, dakshina kannada udupi and uh, certain parts of uttara kannada uh, this move largely seen as bjp trying to appease this voter base uh, has to be seen how other Uh, smaller languages in Karnataka respond to this. Remember, there has been a demand by other languages as well to give or increase the status that the language receives and the funding those languages receive. How they respond uh, will also be crucial to see. But this is a significant chunk of voter base for the BJP, despite the fact. that it's present in a region where the bjp is already strong right hari so two things that i want to understand from you as you rightly pointed out now if this demand does go through then you'll have other groups making a similar demand as well other than the tolavas which are the other groups that have been making a similar demand that's one part of my question the other part i also want to understand how the opposition party is reacting to this well there are several smaller uh, languages which do not have very wide speaking some of them don't even perhaps have a uh, a text as well uh, but they are demanding support and a good status by the state government to in, in ensure that one the language thrive and there could be more research and could be used wider wider widely in, including in uh, digital platforms whether it's bari or uh, the languages that are used by kodavas or other languages in the state uh, that has been a demand for a very long time uh, the state has not uh, responded to those demands uh, adequately is their grouse the opposition now says if the bjp was really keen on ensuring that uh, the this official status given to the language of tulu then uh, it should have done something long back when the bjp came to power in 2019 they are saying that how is it that in just before the election uh, a committee is formed that committee is given just one week's time to submit its report so the bj the congress here questioning the intent of the bjp uh, in going with this move Right. So I was asking you about the political uh, reactions that are coming in. What is the plan of the opposition if a uh, submission like this does go forward? Well, unlikely that uh, any political party in Karnataka Karnataka can afford to oppose this move mm. because uh, that would directly hit their voter base, especially in coastal Karnataka. Uh, the BJP doesn't have much of a presence there. 
it's only between the Congress and uh, the BJP that the fight takes place in coastal Karnataka. The Congress unlikely to oppose the move, but definitely questioning the intent, saying that this once again, just like several other moves of the last few weeks, has been done keeping elections in mind. Right. Harish, I'll just request you to stay on with us because I do want to take in a reaction from the opposition as well. We do have Sankara Gua now joining us on the broadcast. Good to have you on the broadcast with us here in CNN News 18. How do you react to this formation of the panel, which is going to suggest Tulu to be taken as a second official language of the state? No, Tulu can be the second language, the second official language of the state. But uh, this is uh, being done with a political move, you know, more so because there have been so many uh, alleged BJP or uh, right wing uh, murders and killings that have happened. To so manage that effect, uh, the coastal belt has always favored to BJP. This time, they know very well that this is going. To, that is not going to happen. The coastal belt is going to let them down. So, the main, the basic idea behind this is uh, a political motive. If not, they could have done this long back. So anyway, better late than never. If you are going to do it seriously, we'll wait and watch. No, but you, you, you're also making a very uh, crucial point. You're saying all of this is happening only because the BJP realizes that they're not going to get the required numbers in the coastal belt. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. How confident is the Absolutely. Congress as far yes. as the yes. coastal belt is concerned? Sorry? How confident is the Congress as far as the coastal belt is concerned? We are going to perform really well there. We have been getting excellent support from the people, even in all our rallies that we have held. And more so, people are sick. People are tired of the BJP's misrule. So we are very confident to score well in the coastal belt. Not only the coastal belt, the entire state. Okay, Sankara Goa, we leave the conversation there. So that's a representative of the Congress there saying that all these moves are political in nature by the BJP because the BJP is also realizing that they're losing ground, specifically areas of coastal Karnataka. And that's why they're going forward with formation of panels like these. So this is